Hello, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Belief Breakthrough Show. I am so grateful to be here today with Andrea Adams Miller. She is an amazing, phenomenal woman. She is a CEO of her own company. She is uh, also co-founder of the Smile Movement, Keep Smiling Movement, and she- oh, I knows- need to make a correction. Oh. Oh, okay. I am the executive director. Oh, executive director of yes, the Keep Smiling the executive Movement. Director. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And um, she is someone who really knows about self-love, how to take care of yourself. And in the month of November, it is all about self-love because as we dive into these holidays, especially with COVID going on, let's face it, you guys, life is hard. And this has been a challenging year for every single person. No one has escaped this year unscathed. And we need to love ourselves more than ever as we start to examine ourselves in the mirror, as we start to deal with negative personalities, as wounds start to fester and come to the surface. This is the year of focus. This is a year of vision. This is a year of seeing all of us good, bad, and ugly and begin to take our mask off and be vulnerable and be real. And the only way you can do that is through loving yourself fully and completely. All of you, not pieces of you, but all of you. And so tonight, we are so blessed to have Andrea on the line with us because if anyone knows how to smile through the pain, if anyone knows how to push through it all, if anyone knows how to really truly love themselves, it is this amazing woman. And so (laughs) can you tell us a little bit about how you got into the Keep Smiling movement and how you became the CEO of your own company? I love the tears. Tears are a cleansing for the soul, a shower for the soul, right? And we all need some cleansing for our souls today. Yeah. (laughs) Well, and I appreciate it because um, I am, you know, the Keep Smiling movement we, we're a mental and dental health 5013C, and uh, we've been around for six years. We've been a legal entity for two, and um, is it two or is it only one? I can't remember now. It's been two, and um, I actually have right now someone who is writing me who is in extreme conflict, and the Keep Smiling movement, um, I'm so honored to say that we're there for people to help them find their smile when they can't, when they need someone. And, um, you know, um, uh, we've talked people off the fence who are thinking about taking their lives. Uh, we've helped people be resilient and how to make things happen uh, when they don't believe it's possible to show people love when uh, they need love to be um to um, be a support system, to uh, inspire them and motivate them when they don't think anybody else will. And um, Mm -hmm. it's one of those situations, like here I am on a radio show live with you, and I'm also handling someone who's in a crisis right now. And, uh, you know, and and still managing to do both and to be resilient uh, myself and to be able to self-care in the same time, in that same breath. It's been such an unbelievable situation to, um, you know, push forward and to be able to do this and to find that strength within. So, like, I don't even know what you said about me at the beginning, except for I know you said something so nice that I started to cry because it it is, this is so much and yet I wouldn't change it for the world. Um, but especially with everything going on with COVID, I don't know, people have been joking about the stars aligning or being funny right now. And I'm like, I've been having so many people um, that are calling me that they're they're just breaking up their relationships instead of just taking a moment or a breath, they're in crazy turmoil and creating more drama when there needs to be none. And um Yeah. And so talk about needing a belief breakthrough. I mean, that's exactly where they're at and what they need. They need to know that everything is okay. And, um, and, 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 and that the, the, they'll make it through this. They literally can smile their way through. So absolutely. You know, it's really interesting because when we got, when we hopped on this call before we went live and got started, both of us were kind of sharing about where we're at in our lives. Yeah. And even before I jumped on this call, I was finishing up writing an episode for my TV show Unseen that's coming out next month. Um, nice. I Congratulations. Pu- Thank you. I published my book Stuck in the Fire back in March, two days before COVID shut the world down. And um, I, I was blessed a network producer in London decided to pick it up and start a TV show 
a, a documentary on healing, a series of uh, on healing. Beautiful. Yeah, and I was writing episode four of season one, and it was all about escaping the abusive relationship of my first daughter's um, father. Yeah. And I was in tears about 20 minutes ago before we hopped on this call. And then I had to <laughs> shift, <laughs> right? I'm sitting here yeah. writing a story about how I was almost lost my life at the hands of my abuser and how I had to fight to get out of it crying my eyes out as I'm sitting at the table. My son's looking at me. He's like, mommy, what's wrong with you? And I'm like smiling with tears streaming down my face going, it's okay, son, mommy's fine. I'm just writing something that hurts me. Um, because as Yeah, women, I'm just sharing something that hurts my feelings in the moment and I'll be yeah. okay. I'll be okay. Yeah. yeah, but as women, we smile through it all. So I think that it's really interesting that the keep smiling movement is something that you're a, found, a, a, a executor of because, yeah. <laughs> yeah, director, um, because us as women specific, like men do it too, but women, we slap a smile on our face and we keep it moving. We stuff and we stuff and we stuff and we stuff. And that's the exact opposite of loving ourselves and taking care of ourselves. <clears throat> Well, you know, it is interesting because um, yes and no, I, I say it's both. Um, I agree with you and, and at the same time, and at the same time, because it's not that, it's not that we don't care about each ourselves when we do this, right. but we still make the world happen. So like mm -hmm. tonight earlier, I had uh, some things situation where I had to draw some very definite boundaries around someone that I'm very, very close to. And they just were pushing the boundaries completely. Uh, and then, so this is, a, 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 you know, another situation now with this other person in crisis where I'm trying to help them and doing things with them. And, and when you have this push against you, um, I, I, I was leaving in 20 minutes to go have a huge celebration dinner for my, well, not huge, but a celebration dinner for my husband. And yet I stopped crying. I got myself together. I showed up. Everything was happy. Everything was fun. And then I come here and then I have someone who's breaking down and I'm literally in tears before we get ready to start the show. And I'm like, no, I'm still going to, you even said we could do the show later. And I'm like, no, because the keep smiling movement has to go on. I have to go on. I can't just stop. And, and I cannot allow the drama to allow me not to live my life and my purpose. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to let the other people who are feeling sad and depressed take me down. I'm not going to let those anchors pull me down. And so I still find a way to be resilient and do and press on. Like, so I don't quit. I don't stop. I mean, and it's okay to quit and stop, by the way. It is. There are times when you need to, but not every time. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I didn't need to stop. I'm like, no, this is perfect. I'll just be real and candid and authentic today. And, um, and then here we are, you know, we're mm -hmm. on and, um, and then you said something and it just triggered the tears from me because I am very passionate about this and determined to see it through. And we've been hurting this year. Uh, the organization is taking a hurt because we uh, don't have the funding that we were supposed to have this year that we were promised. People haven't been able to follow through. And yet our work has stepped up more than ever. We're public more books and products to try to show people love and understanding and at the same time we have all this um, crazy turmoil that's going on and now more threats of lockdowns where I'm I work with speakers and authors and photographers and videographers who do things on stages at events event planners and none of that world is happening anymore and mm -hmm. it is really interesting because we all have to reinvent ourselves and find a new normal Mm -hmm. And uh, and we have to persevere. And so I, I I and so yes, you're right. We sometimes don't self care or say no or find someone else to because we can delegate. Mm -hmm. We can do something else to self care. And at the same time, for me, the self care is to say no to this crazy drama ness mm -hmm. and and move forward and move forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's setting do. those boundaries. It sounds like setting, setting yeah. those boundaries. And that's how you're loving yourself through it all. Yeah. 
Yeah, because I'm not going to not be on a show and possibly be here to let someone know that we're there to help them, to help them save their life, to help them redirect them to resources and to referrals, to help them find partners for their business, to send people. We, we advocate for like 30 plus other um, nonprofit organizations, and I want to make sure that they have access to all of that. And if I were right now not to do the show, then I am allowing I am allowing all of this external to prevent this awesomeness from happening. Mm -hmm. And I choose not to allow that to happen. It's a choice. Yeah. Yeah. So let's dive into that because I think that a lot of us that are a part of this show that listen and watch the show is, and, and if you're watching, comment in and let us know what you think. But I feel like, we we tend to let the external cloud our judgment or cloud our thought processing so that we neglect ourselves and we don't take care of ourselves. And that's how we lose our smile, right? That's how we lose our happiness. That's how we lose our joy in life. And so it's literally a choice that you're saying that you have made. It is a choice to say, I'm not going to allow all of this crap that is surrounding me steal my happiness and steal my joy. I am choosing to find joy through the storm. I am choosing to be happy and to sustain my happiness through this all. So what are, you, you said I'm dealing with this crisis as I'm still self caring for myself. What does that mm -hmm. look like for you? How does that, how do you do that? What are those steps that you take to self care for yourself even while you're helping others out of crisis? So, uh, so one of the things, I mean, you guys just watched me go through <laughs> when I was crying so hard there the person who's in crisis so a lot of times when people are in crisis they they're in so much pain they say things that are hurtful triggers to the very people who love them and why because it, it's I, I don't know why I mean I guess I kind of do know why it's but it's almost like they are like saying I dare you to keep loving me because I feel lost I feel unimportant I feel unvalued something something has happened where they don't have that feeling of strength and love and value and when they uh, react to you, whether they're a client, a peer, a friend, uh, a loved one, uh, a neighbor, I mean, it, it, you know, and in a world like this where we're on camera and so forth, too, we have relationships of so many different things. And it could be someone really, really far related, you know, a not related to me and yet at the same time you know when they lash back in anger so like you know we we try to give someone a referral and then they complain about the referral or whatever and you're like wow i'm giving you gifts and you're like you know biting the hand that feeds you know it's kind of like wackadoodle but they do that on purpose it's like they they need for you they need to have that scapegoat of someone to vomit upon and mm -hmm. um so two things happen i allow a little bit of it because it's okay. I I am big enough that I can handle that someone can work. But the second they start to bite, that's where I need to put the boundaries and say done. Mm -hmm. uh, like uh, I, and I don't mean done forever, just done right now. Like so I'm not gonna, so I just stopped responding and so forth and let that person be where they're at and and they're going to have to take control of getting over that. So I'm not going to feed into that crazy. I'm going to allow it to be and then what you saw is you saw myself that it hurt me. And, and, and then I had to, and in my head, I'm saying, wait a minute, those words hurt you, but only because I created a story behind those. Mm. Those are just words. If I were listening to uh, somebody at a dinner table next to me and they said those words and happened to say them and looked my direction when they said them, I wouldn't go, oh my God, they're saying that to me. They don't love me. They don't care about me. I wouldn't. I'd go, well, that's interesting. That person's in crisis. Um, gosh, I send them love and energy, you know, and that's what I realized. Like I am only buying into it because I started creating a story from my own head, my own mm. world, my own lack of value or whatever. You know, we all have those sensitive moments where it happens. And for me, I realized, no, I need to be on here now. And I told them that I was getting ready to be on the air. And so I just stopped responding mm -hmm. because, and yet they still pushed 
and and yeah, you know, I don't even know if they realized that I was serious that I was going to be live on the show. <laughs> <laughs> but I was live. I'm on live on a show. Right? And uh, yeah. so I just had to step away. And they right. said, you know, I'm going to do this and this and this and this. And I just said, OK, I have to be OK with the fact that that's what they want to say. And that's their choice. And I'm mm-hmm. going to allow them to make those choices, whether they're good or bad. It, I'm not going to have any judgment on it. I'm just going to love them through whatever it is. And at the end, I'll, if they want me or need us, then we'll be here. And if they're not, then, then they, they need it. They found another resource and I'm okay with that. And so the self care comes from, you know, um, I have to step out of, out of myself because what happens is, you know, our little girl, our little boy in us, you know, comes out and that's what we're hearing. And the self care is to go, that has nothing to do with me. That, that, Mm -hmm. and and when I, and when I'm saying that and go, I'm looking at my phone, my phone is here propped up on the thing beside me. That has nothing to do with me. We have so many people that reach out and and need things and and again when they're hurting they 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 ask for help and sometimes they're mean about it. Yeah, yeah, they are. And you just I love, love them. I love how you say that it's the story you put into it. It's the words that you create behind it. I talk to a lot of my clients and a lot of people they get hurt. And so they build up these walls around their heart, these like invisible walls. And I call yeah. them like, like, like cement stones, right? We, we create a fortress around our heart because we think if we create this fortress and we can't be hurt, if we don't let anyone in, they can't hurt us. And so what I try to tell my clients is you need to break down the fortress because not only can you not receive love through those walls, you can't receive pain, but you also can't receive love. And you also Mm -hmm. can't give it out. So what I need you to do is break down that fortress, break down those walls that you've built around your heart and just install a picket fence because the picket fence allows you to keep your boundary up. It allows you to keep your safe space for yourself, but it allows you to speak and communicate through that picket fence because there's holes, there's space that create a conversation so that you have your boundaries, you have your safe space, you have your protection that you can love through it and you can still receive love, but yet you also can say, this is my space. You can't come past here. This you, you need to stay on the other side of my fence because this is my safe zone and I will not allow you to transfer your pain to me. And so to create that, instead of that uh, barrier or defense wall, to just, just create your boundary, your, your soft picket fence, so we can still love mm-hmm. through it. And that's kind of what you're saying in a different way is, I'm choosing to not put my words, my story behind what they're doing because that's their choice. They're acting out of their own pain and I don't have to Mm -hmm. absorb that pain. I just have to be here to love them through it, to keep that communication up, to not shut them out entirely. I love that vision. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very empathic and I feel for people. Um, I see things that they don't always share. I, I know that it's happening. And a uh, part of that is, is creating other boundaries for myself that I don't go completely there with them, that I don't take on their pain. I can't take it on. And, and the thing is, is it doesn't even help them. All it does is put me in chaos and then I feel icky ooh, and then I can't handle or take care of the things that I need to. So if you have people in your life who, you know, um, I, I, you know, it's, it's this, like right now, I, and, and, you know, I, and some of this resilience comes from a, a world of learning things. I grew up in a household where there was a lot of turmoil and it was very private. And nobody knew about it. So there was a lot of, um, you know, uh, discord and it was hidden, you know, and, 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 and here I am 51 and I'm finally revealing that. And then, um, and handling it, you know, over the last five or six years, well, maybe 10 years now, I've been doing a lot of personal development to let a, let go of all of that and, and to stand in integrity and, and authenticity that, that that's my life, you know, that's what it was. And at the same time, there was some other point I had to that about, um, you know, being present with yourself and, mm-hmm. and allowing that space just to be. Um, Mm. being forgiving myself when I can't save them 
I, you know, I, I, I can't save everybody and to be okay with that. Um, uh, I was a 911 dispatcher at one point. And uh, so uh, having worked in law enforcement and working in that atmosphere, you know, um, we didn't save everyone. Mm. Um, That's really I, hard. I, it, 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 it was hard. And, and I got over it. Mm-hmm. And I forgave myself for it because knew it wasn't my responsibility to save them. And that's me. I think that's what the more I stand in that, the better that I actually make other people because I make them responsible for their own actions. So I can mm-hmm. love them. I can hear them. I can listen to them. But ultimately, it's a choice. And I'm not taking that on like I used to. I used to take it on so much more. And my resilience to be able to to break down and then be able to be back on my feet is like 45 seconds now. I mean, it's hysterical. To, I mean, you guys just watched me just go to the beginning. <laughs> so you could see that I was like, break down. Boop, I'm good. And um, yeah. I, 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 part, I know what I wanted to say earlier is when people all of a sudden can't handle things. Again, I don't want to shame anybody who can't handle things, but they can handle things. I I want to let people know that they have the ability to be resilient. Um, And part of that training may have come from being in theater. Uh, When I was in theater, the show always does go on. Someone's Mm -hmm. sick, someone breaks something, someone dies, something happens. We figure it out and the show still goes on. And Mm -hmm. that is something that I've taken. And part of that comes from my law enforcement. Part of that comes from growing up in a household where I was bawling one moment, but I didn't want the world to know. So I just shut up anyways. Um, When I'm responsible for other people and other things, I show up anyways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So how can you be in your life and have things? How can you find out that your cat just died and still be on the air and smile and talk? How can you have um, someone just commit suicide? Um, actually, recently I've been told to change that wording because it sounds like they are committing a crime when you say the word commit. Someone has taken their life because, um, you know, they, they didn't commit a crime. They did something. Uh, they took an action that um, was hurtful to themselves and to others, but it wasn't it to harm others it was to release themselves from pain so i want to be respectful of that terminology um but if you're the person and someone else has done had that happen to them or they've done that to themselves how can you still go on how can you still have the resilience to make things happen no matter what? Um, someone just said, okay, I, I want to divorce, you know, I'm divorcing you and I'm, I'm leave or I'm leaving or I break up with you. And how can you still go to work? How can you still take care of your kids? How can you still function? How can you hear, oh, we've shut down again. You're not going to make any money. And how do you still get up and make your life happen? Yeah. It's a choice. Yeah. It's a choice. Absolutely. And I think the key there is responsibility because if you don't take responsibility, if you point the finger at everybody else, but yourself, you're Mm -hmm. not going to be able to make the change because you're not allowing yourself to make that choice. Yeah. It's so, so, you know, earlier you talked about how women uh, do this. I do want to give acknowledgement to the two men that are the founders of this movement. So the one gentleman, his name is Barry Shore. Um, He passed out these cards that, uh, Interestingly enough, I only have one in Spanish in front of me. Um, I only have the Spanish one in front of me. So this says, keep smiling in French. (laughs) And that's because I was with a French woman. So I took her picture holding it, but I kept it because it was my only French one that I had left. And um, we pass out these cards to people all over the world to help keep smiling. Um, Barry Shore is the one who originated these cards. Uh, it was a mission of his to share them to millions of people all over the world. And then Ken Rashawn, who's the other co-founder, uh, Ken is a photographer, celebrity event photographer, and he was taking pictures of people with these cards and said, you know, Barry, I want to make this a movement. I want to I want to do something with it. 
And uh, Barry's like, yeah, let's do it. And uh, Ken and I had already started to work together, knew each other a little bit. And then he asked me to help him. And then I said, this needs to be uh, an official nonprofit. We need to do something with this. And we are a mental and dental health organization. And uh, Tina, it's for two reasons. So when you smile, your mental health is affected and changed. Whether you fake smile or real smile, you have a release of dopamines and that's dopa or neurotransmitters, dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphin, which is a dose. So our motto is we give a dose of hope, a dose of hope. And that's what we're doing. And because a lot of people have um, dental caries or missing teeth or disfigurement um, or, you know, something's happened where um, they have a deformity from an accident or something, they're ashamed of their smile and then they hide their smile. And um, if they're not smiling because they're embarrassed of their teeth, they don't have that opportunity to have that natural flow of, you know, bathing of beautiful things that can happen for you. So we want them to feel confident and to feel loved and feel good about smiling. Even if they're, and so I tell people, I love your imperfectly perfect smile. Mm -hmm. I used to, I used to want to have perfect teeth and, and all that. It was really important to me because I had a huge big gap. Like you could put a toothpick and like leave it, you know, like right there hanging in between my teeth. And I had my teeth are really little. I had these porcelain, you know, when I was 20 and, um, you know, and then I always had them whitened. I had braces, you know, from 12 to 14 and you know, widened the roof of my mouth and did all that. And then nowadays, it's kind of funny how I actually kind of favor imperfect smiles. Mm -hmm. I like it. Like, I love my husband. My husband has a big, wide smile and like kind of two fangy teeth and, and a big, big, wide mouth. And um, anybody else would put him in braces. And I'm like, God, I love this imperfect smile of his. He's got a great mm -hmm. imperfect smile. And, you know, and uh, one of my favorite pictures of somebody smiling is Ken took this black and white picture of a homeless man with only two or three teeth. And it is the beautifulest smile I have ever seen. It is literally my favorite smile picture. And I'm not judging him on his teeth or lack of teeth. It doesn't matter. His smile is so gold so gold. So when you're able to see that, that these people can find happiness, no matter what, I mean, that's just really what the organization stands for, an opportunity to help people find their smile, no matter what. It's just beautiful. I love that. I love that. Mm -hmm. And so where can they get a hold of that organization? Um, you can go to www the keep smiling movement.com the keep smiling movement.com and um uh, you can also join us on our ambassador page we have the keep smiling ambassador page on uh on this field and um uh, Facebook is what I'm trying to say. And uh, uh, we have about 2,900 people on there and they share positive quotes, and inspiration. It's a place of support and love. And it's just a place for people to be, to see positive, wonderful things. And that's what we want for people to be able to do. It's quite, quite amazing. And we have over 133 books published. That we, This is mirrored, so I can't do what I'm doing. This one here is my book, The Keep Smiling Movement, um, the red one. Uh, I'm the heart of gold winner. There's my there's my heart of gold uh, tr um, plaque. And then over here is one of the books, The Keep Smiling Book with Max on it. We co-author these books with different people. Uh, Ken, the co-founder of, um, um, is the author, so to speak. And it tells the story of our movement. And then it tells the story of the person who's the co-author. Like Tina, if it were you, it would be your story of, you know, like who you are and how you lost your smile, how you gained your smile back and how you create smiles in the world today with your products, goods and services. And then we have about a hundred quotes um, that help inspire and motivate along with 99 other people besides the person who the book is, you know, the story is about, pictures of them smiling, holding the keep smiling cards. And when people see them, it lights them up. It's really fun to see them handle and touch the books, whether they're digital or, or uh, physical books that people brighten up. It really helps them feel good. And reading the stories, they're really short, condensed, easy stories. And it's a really beautiful thing. 
That's amazing. Thank you so much. I, I mm -hmm. want to say thank you for sharing your time with us today and being on the show. You guys, Andrea is so amazing. Not only is she sharing her time with us today, but she's also given all of you guys a free gift, which is down below in the comments is a link to Andrea's free gift for all of you. Um, and you can get in touch with her. I'm, a, I'm assuming from that free link also they can get in touch with you yeah yeah that... yeah yeah it's www.theredcarpetconnection.com forward slash free gifts that's a seven day publicity challenge so if you're in a business at all or if you work for someone else publicity is important and i give you seven days worth of videos and information so that you can make things happen for yourself and um, especially now during covid i want your businesses to thrive and for you to be okay doing what you need to do and so that's our way of doing that and if you get a hold of me or if you reach us through www.thekeepsmilingmovement.com um, and reach out to us there. We'll send you a free gift, an ebook of um, maybe one of our latest um, Keep Smiling books. And we're also asking for donations because uh, we also provide um, services. So hypnosis and meditation and hypnotic language -ing with consultations to help people. And then we also give them referral sources and other things. And we um, are uh, solidifying different partners so we can start giving dental um, services uh, for people and creating those opportunities for them and more additional services to help them with their business and their lives. So yeah, we're doing awesome. a lot. Thank, thank you so much. You guys, thank you. If you, thank you so much for tuning in tonight and listening to us. And I hope you got a couple of nuggets on how to care for yourself this month. If you are interested in purchasing my book, Stuck in the Fire, to hear more about my journey and how I've changed my beliefs and my breakthroughs and my mindset uh, in order to make it through my trauma and heal from my past wounds, please grab it at healingbytina.com. And we will be launching or premiering Unseen, the documentary on healing based off of the book Stuck in the Fire within the next month. So I will talk to you guys on the next episode. Thank you so much, Andrea, for coming on. We will see all of you guys Monday live and we'll be having andrea one of your people on on monday i believe uh, i think dr. so doc, dr karen perkins i believe it will be so yes you'll uh, love her great yes we will see you guys on monday 6 p.m pacific time thank you bye keep smiling <laughs>